Namaste. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Turn Your Pain to Power, Dasma's Diary. I am Vanessa Bell Jackson, and I would like to thank you all for tuning in to my very first YouTube video on my memoir, my second memoir, Diary of a Single Mother, Sheep in the Midst of Wolves. It was just released February the 19th, 2019, not 1999, y'all. Hey, okay. So this is a really, really good book because it is designed to help you guys uh, turn your pain into power the way I have turned my pain into power. No matter what we go through, we can always get through difficult times. Adversities and hardships is a given. We live in a world where we cannot get around going through hard times. So this book tells you about hard times and despite what you go through, you keep moving forward. Despite what you go through, you continue to be a decent person and don't let that person who destroyed you make you into a negative person. I decided to have my broadcast on a time in my life when I was at the lowest point of my life. But the lowest point of my life was also a new beginning. I was 18 years old. I was a mother of one child. And I had no place to go. I could have stayed with my mother in the projects of 13th Street, South Philadelphia projects, but I chose not to. I wanted to stay with my father, but the situation didn't work out and my, pop, my father said no. Um, thus, I was forced to go into a shelter, but I'm not even gonna say forced. I decided to go into the shelter because I felt as though the shelter was a fresh start and a new beginning. So shelter for some people is considered rock bottom, but the shelter for me was considered a fresh start and a new beginning. So if you are going through something and you feel as though that you are at rock bottom, let me tell you something right now. Rock bottom doesn't mean rock bottom to a person who is strong and powerful. Rock bottom means new beginnings. So that's reverse the meaning of rock bottom. Rock bottom, heck no. Rock bottom, new beginnings. So let's go. When I decided to go into the shelter, I had a daughter. She was only two months old and I decided to go into the shelter and I found myself at People's Emergency Center. It's a shelter in West Philadelphia on 39th and Spring Garden around that area. And this is where I found myself. This is where I found hope. This is where I learned how to be a woman. This is where I learned how to cook and clean and do laundry and stand on my own two feet. So I thank God for me not wanting to stay with my mother. And I thank God for my dad who I love very dearly and he loved me, but he did not want me to come live with him with the baby. And that is A-OK -okay because vagrancies was my issue, which means homelessness. That was my issue and I had a child. So I can't expect no one to take me in because I had a child, because I was a teenage mother. So I thank my situation because my situation made me who I am today. My situation got me into the shelter. My situation got me into my first Philadelphia Housing Authority apartment. So I want to thank L.B. Johnson, the president back in the day because he came up with these programs that allowed us to stand on our own two feet when we were going through hard times. He came up with these programs that allowed us to find our path when we didn't have any hope from our community or when we didn't have any hope from our family. These government programs led the way. Great Society programs, I thank you. I did a four month stay in the shelter PEC in West Philadelphia and I learned all that I can learn to become a good mother. And I also learned all that I can learn to be steadfast in my new life, which was 3500 Fairmount Avenue, apartment 1008. Yes, that is Mantua Hall in West Philadelphia, AKA down the bottom. And that is where I got my two bedroom apartment for me and my daughter. And I thank God that I did this process. Even though it was hard, I did it. People thought I was crazy. They told me, Vanessa, are you crazy? Don't go into a shelter. You must have lost your mind. But when I went in, guess what? I had people calling me up saying, hey, Vanessa, can I go there too? 
the shelter was a clean shelter it was very nice it was very stable it wasn't one of those crazy you know dirty shelters that we see on tv where there's a thousand cots no we had rooms we had sections we were we were divided and it was very stable and again i just want to thank pec so if you find yourself in a bad situation all i'm saying is don't see yourself as being broken don't see yourself as god hates you because god doesn't these are trials and tribulations that we all must face if we want to become powerful you got to go through some things uh, if you want to be powerful you have to positively overcome life uh, if you want to be seen as powerful that is what i did when i was at pec i was becoming powerful now i made some mistakes when i was at pec and i made some mistakes after i was from PC, when I got my own apartment, yes, we make mistakes. I was only 18, 19 years old. I made mistakes. And I grew from those mistakes as well. Once I lived in a project for about a year, I decided to go to school, nursing school, to become a certified nursing assistant. And I became a certified nursing assistant and I made decent money in 1998. That was a great program, eight months of schooling. And then I did another 30 days of externship at Simpson House on City Nine Avenue. Now, the thing about the Great Society programs in the PHAs is that once your income elevates, so does your rent, your rent increases. It didn't make any sense for me to stay in PHA, Philadelphia Housing Authority. Also, I wanted another family to benefit the way that I have. So I decided to leave PHA so that another family can take advantage of the program and help them because I needed to help. But now that I'm a CNA, I'm working all these shifts, I'm making money, I'm making over $40,000 a year as a CNA with no college degree, may I add, just a certification. I was able to live a fruitful life at 18, 19 years old. So yes, I became a homeowner at the age of 21 years old. Family told me don't do it. These are the same family members who are in PHA and I love them and I respect them. That is their path, that is their choice. PHA, I love it, I respect it. Government programs, I love it, I respect it. But the persons in PHA or housing authority and government programs and they try to tell you to don't buy a house, don't listen to them because you can't expect someone who never accomplished anything or who never accomplished home ownership to tell you to do it. When you overcome something, when you decide that you want more, listen to your own desires and listen to your own intuition, which is what I did. Becoming a homeowner wasn't easy. I had no credit score, but I had rental payments. I had a cell phone bill and I had daycare expenses. That's all the credit I had. Those were non-traditional trade lines that doesn't do anything for your credit score. But guess what? I had a record of paying all of those bills one time and every month. And that is what I use to buy my first house in Sharon Hill. And there is a newspaper article inside of my memoir showing and informing you how I purchased my first house in 1999, 2000 shall I say, because I settled, well, 1999, yes. December the 22nd, 1999 is when I became a homeowner. And the newspaper, Philadelphia Inquirer, came out to my house. Yes, they did. And they did an article on me because perseverance pays off. It was it was a tough journey becoming a homeowner. I had issues with childcare. It wasn't it wasn't easy. I had no help with the children, but I did it. So my goal and the purpose of this broadcast is to let you guys know because we live in a hard time right now. We live in struggling times right now, and I just want to let you guys know that despite what you're going through, not having a place to stay losing your job, going through a divorce, whatever you may be going through. When a door closes, that is a new beginning for you. So overcome what you are going through. Be more than what you are going through. Don't let adversities and hardships stop you from being a person that you know that you can be. Honestly, we need these things. Going through hard times is a part of life. We all know the book of Job. That's the book in the Bible where God was having his field day with Job, right? But despite it all, Job kept his faith in God. So I'm asking you, no matter what you are going through, I'm asking you to please keep your faith in God because I'm, I'm telling you now, because I have been through hell and back. And once we go through chapter and chapters and chapters through this book, you will see what I'm talking about. And despite the hell that I went through, 
I kept my faith in God. I kept my faith in the divine energy of the universe, which is that spirit and that intuition that moves us all and gives us hope no matter what we are going through. So I pray that you guys will find inspiration. And some of you probably already have. You guys are probably just watching me to see what I'm doing. And I thank you for watching me despite the fact that you guys have already found your true self. Despite the fact that you guys have already found your intuition. Thanks for watching me and just seeing what I have to say. I appreciate it. And spread the word to those who may need the empowering words that I am trying to offer today. Spread the, spread the word to those people who may need uplifting positivity because the book offers it. No matter what you're going through, homelessness, loss of job, loss of husband, loss of child, loss of parent, whatever, this is your destiny. Become an advocate for what you have gone through and help others successfully overcome life. Because if you lost a child, if you lost a mother, if you lost a job, if you lost a husband, if you lost a home, I'm pretty sure universe and your family will want you to overcome the things that you have lost. And remember what you have lost and keep moving forward despite the memories of what once was. Day one might be hard. Day two might be hard. But the more you go through it, the more you endure your new situation, the more you will see the plan that the divine energy of the universe has for you. But you have to see the positivity of what you're going through. Because if you do not see the positivity and the lesson that can be taught from what you are going through, you will fall. We have to look at life optimistically despite the pain because life is painful in medicine. We call it growing pains. And life is also growing pains. I am Vanessa Bell Jackson, and this is Diary of a Single Mother. And this is the very first broadcast that I decided to put out here on YouTube. And I decided to start again with me living in a shelter system because it was a hard time. In the beginning, I thought it was, but the more I lived in the shelter, Got past the first day, got past the second day. By week two, I realized this was the path that I needed. So despite the pain, we must push through and feel the power from God. Feel the power from the divine and be all that you can be despite the heartaches and pain that comes from life. This is turn your pain into power. Cosmos Diary and my goal is to help you succeed even more. My goal is to help you become all that you can be despite what life might throw your way. So in closing, let's all turn our pain into power and this is a life continuum. We may face one pain, we may overcome it, but we will face another. So let me hear you guys say, and let me hear you guys roar. Let's all turn our pain into power because this is God, this is the divine, and this is life. Now I'm gonna say amen. And be strong. Now I'm gonna say.